So I'll ask you some questions. Right? And my handwriting is terrible, so please. So what questions should I ask? I'll ask that what is the tenure of my audience, the general tenure of my audience? That's one. I'll just get started, please. and choosing people like the headmaster, okay? If you don't participate. So I can go about polling people. Yes. About what their interests are. But poll about So general areas of data sciences, um, okay, um, so areas of challenges, various domains within data sciences, again what is the interest of the audience on that scale, right, that is what we want to judge, I am guessing that's what your intent is, or am I, am I not getting this, please feel free to explain it. more like if you want to pick a topic uh, and you want to understand who the audience is, huh. then generally, you know, uh, if people have common challenges. Right, to try to figure out what are the common challenges, common problems that people work on. Yeah. Okay. Um, common, common challenges. Common. Common is the key word. Okay. <clears throat> common challenges. What else? Based on experience. Experience, yeah. Does that? Yeah. Based on the presenter's experience, the presenter can choose the least understood or least and, uh, or most confused area and then talk about that. So based on my experience. Yes. Based on your experience. Let's say. So the speakers. Uh, uh, speakers. Let's say you talk to hundred. Expertise. Yeah. Expertise. Yeah. Right. Available expertise. Right. Um, Sorry for talking behind that. Let me take some more quick look at some of the notes that I have made. Um, okay, yeah, another question to ask. How many of you are actually data analysts? Am I lecturing to people who are data analysts? Please raise hands. How many of you are data analysts? One, two, three, four. Four out of what is the overall count? 30? 40? So 4 out of say, 4 out of 40, 10%. 10 percent. 10 percent data analysts. You guys, you will keep a tab on whether what I am doing is right or wrong. Okay? And tell me if I am going wrong, as I said, I am not a data analyst. Okay. So now, what other things? Let me look at some of the other. But please, keep, keep bringing out those those questions. Um, okay. Uh, what are what is the background of my audience? Um, are you all software professionals? Yes. No. One no. How many non-software professionals? Is that an important question to ask, my friends? Yes. Yes. So background domain. Um, background. What else? Education. What is the general education level of people here? Are you all um, and in in many of in, in my particular organization right now? I well, sorry. Let's just say, what is your general education background? Graduation. That's it. Graduates, postgraduates, how many postgraduates? Okay, there's a sizable population of postgraduates. Graduates, um, postgrads. Now, look at all of these things. Take two minutes to pass through.
try and understand what is the impact of each of these metrics. So uh, this is like 60 grams, roughly, right? 40 uh, grams. Um, this is like 90 software, right? Uh, 10 others. Um, um, okay, what is the objective of the audience? Are you looking to clear the interviews? <laughs> is it an important question to ask? Yes. Objective of the audience. So, anyway. <clears throat> so now, we have all these questions. I'm sorry that I haven't yet started my talk. But um, we haven't even chosen the subject. But uh, is this is this interesting, guys? Yeah. Is this interesting? Are you engaged in the problem that we are talking about? Yes. Perfect. Good. Great. So, um, so we have all of these. I'll use those magic words. We have all of these dimensions. We have all of these features that we are feeding into our intelligence system. The manual intelligence engine, the man, the human intelligence engine. And we are trying to solve an objective problem. Welcome to your first project. We still have 20 minutes. That's the timer, is it? Yeah. Do we have enough time to solve the problem? <laughs> Let's see. Um, and don't worry, we'll also get to the interesting stuff once that you are waiting for. But the reason I started off like this was because so you understand two key things about the analytics. Actually, three key things of what is the analytics? What is the raw material? into data analytics. <clears throat> so, and again, I'll pose the question to you and these answers will get the candidates. So, the four most important So we 
have thought, we have we have the raw data by the way, we know the audience profile, we know some of the preferences, these are the features, we have approximate data around this, um, right? We have some sporadic numbers um, and we know our objective, so we have the raw data, we know our objective, um, and we'll figure out how to solution this. But before we go into and this is the mistake that that is extremely critical in my opinion to watch out for is that don't use the tools and the lingos and the frameworks and the solutions and all of that to decide on this. Do this first, then come to this. Think about how you are going to solve the problem, not how are you going to fit it into a spark job. Not how you are going to use big data. Which is why this objective is very, very important. If you want to clear interviews, better do something that requires you to write a map reading stuff. If you want to solve a problem, map reduce is not important. What is important is this three. Is that clear? Any questions? Any questions? Good. Um, so now, let's come back to the problem. Time, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Um, what should be the next step? So we have some raw data. We know our objective. What do we do now? Tell me, what should be the next step? How do you get from this data to making a decision, achieving your objective to this question? What topic to choose to talk for, for this audience? Sorry? Please raise your hands, I'll come to you. Try to understand the raw data. Try to understand the raw data. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, understand raw data. Yes. <coughs> Options. Um, ideas, solution approaches. Algos. Right? What else? Why, why do we care about the problem and how do you, like, how, what answers can the data give us? That is sort of similar to the ideas, right? You are thinking about what answers you want. What questions to ask? What questions to ask, ask right? Uh, but the question is there, right? So at what level are you saying what questions to ask? In, the, in, term, in the level of anal analysis, what kind of questions do you ask? the data, so that you move towards the solution, uh, objective that you are trying to achieve. So, okay, bring it up into steps. Um, so, I am trying to understand what you mean by, give me a question. That is the best way. Tell me of a question that you have in your mind. Oh, why do you think about that? Anybody else? Given the objective that I am trying to solve, do I have the right kind of raw data? Data validation. Very good. What else? Um, some others, please. If you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, performance criteria. What do you mean by performance? Uh, so, <coughs> so, suppose you have to uh, check whether the next year or the previous year sale uh, was up to the mark. So, for example, the target was set as 10% and uh, you just achieved 1%. So, performance criteria is in our <coughs> own the right direction. Who is the audience of the data? What are you using the data? Analytics, we have done some analytics, but who is looking at the analytics? Right? Even, yeah. I mean, is it a CFO who is looking at it monthly versus is it a campaign manager who is looking at it moment by moment about as that cricket match is progressing, is my item selling or not? Is my ad selling? Are my ads getting shown or not? Right? What is the use of the data? And depending on that, the audience and the use case, um, there can be many things, right? You can you, you have an impact on latency of these things, for example, which is what you were talking about. The latency of how uh, of you make a call. So uh, that's right. Now what else? Anything else? Okay, 
So, but anyway, let's get closer to actually picking that topic finally. So anyway, we have all of these, we understand the raw data, right? So in my raw data now, what I'm seeing is that, um, yeah, most of people, are, people of the people here are tenured, but how much, you can ask one more question. Um, how many people have less than five years of tenure? Okay, less than 10 years, between five to 10 years? And more than 10 years? So it's a very, very profile. I'm pretty honest to one, actually. Honest to one, at right? five and three. Um, okay. Um, interest, how many challenges? Okay, we'll see. That's so fun. Okay, now. So see the process that is going on. Okay, I have seen this is a simple question to solve, and we are still not there. We're struggling. And this is where the prop challenges come. That many data science projects get lost just when you are trying to structure that data. Right? It's not just a valid issue. It's not just. A Validate, validate, validate all the time. Which is 
provide again another very important um, aspect is this feedback loop that they talk about all the time. <clears throat> that how is your model performing? Feed that back into the model and if the model can adapt, then you are reaching into those areas where, uh, where the state of the art lies today. It pushes the realm of intelligence. It is getting into that artificial intelligence space because that feedback loop is now enabling people to, enabling these machines, these algorithms, not only to make these judgment calls, but also verify and adapt to their learnings. Right? It's beautiful. I mean, if you look at some of these advanced, but I don't, guys, what I really, I mean, my biggest takeaway from this talk would be, from this half an hour that we have had, um, would be, it's already more than half an hour, but anyway, um, that we have had is that if, if you guys don't feel scared when you think of data analytics, but you realize that this is, this is something that we do all the time, all of us. The rest of it is just how do you enable things. I mean, if you have to do it at scale, which is things that you yourself mentioned, and look at the way this tallied with my notes. Scale, latency, user experience, availability, security, right? These are the other aspects. Whether to use Spark, whether to use MapReduce, whether to just put the data in a database or an Excel sheet. Forget an Excel sheet. We have just a whiteboard. And that's all we need, really. Think logically again. You know, if you if you ever feel that okay, wow, I have done something fabulous. I am using Spark. I am using MapReduce. Think, can you do it using an Excel sheet? If you can, please avoid using that MapReduce. <laughs> because don't forget Think. Right? Um, I'll end my lecture here with a decision that we are going to talk, given the audience split, given the areas of interest, given the typical challenges, given but primarily probably the most uh, important uh, features that I have read into my intelligence system is uh, the fact that most of you are not uh, data engineers, uh, that the distribution is more or less even, there is a definite objective to learn and I have decided that we will talk about uh, how to kickstart a data analytics project. And we have not only done that, we have actually completed two data analytics problems. The first, I use data from the various corners to answer this question. And the second, I use all your inputs to come to an answer to this second question. Last 10 minutes for any questions. Thank you so much. Questions? Anything? And I do not talk with some good questions. Ten minutes of time. Yes. What do you suggest, uh, for example, a person needs to shift his career towards this? How do you suggest to start from what exactly took the problem first? Taking some of these courses is a good idea. Um, one that I taught in at our track. Um, those courses are very well structured. Uh, that's the best. Uh, it also depends on. No, I mean going by the profile of the audience again, using that data. Um, it's best to just take a course probably. If you're already working, you don't want to spend too much of time. You can't. Unless you are exceedingly motivated, it's very difficult to do it on your own. Or work on some projects. The best way to just work on it. You get a project in your 20% time. Uh, can you talk about a project flow you went through? For example, the project you did. We went through a project flow. Didn't we? Yeah, but what are some of the challenges you faced? Or some details about some project? About a project that I, I
visualization, so it's very easy to understand. So when I was uh, uh, leading the location-based hybridizing, um, we, we wanted to the objective of that exercise um, was to basically improve our ad relevance. Um, not only that, but also to uh, focus the sales and business initiatives on the right geographies in the right areas. So we had, we, and we have a lot of business. We need billion ad requests per day. Super scale. Um, and we used to get all that data and we used to, we had to make decisions based on that data, right? Okay, so where to serve this ad next? Which, which campaigns to focus in which geographies, or which, which areas require our people to this, which areas are developing economy where teams are coming up. Huge, big, impactful questions that run the business. So we used to, how did we start? Um, so for instance, one question, specific question, you know, you're running down the specific questions, it came to the fact that, you know, the, is, is our data hygiene enough? Can we really make you know, decisions? Are people spoofing their locations? So we just started by you know taking about 1,000 points. There's no way you can plot 8 billion points on this no tool. You can develop that tool. See, that's another huge area of it. Tooling for large-scale data processing is not quite there. You need more sophisticated tools. But anyway, so we take a sample of that data and we put it on a map and we look at it. We sit in front of it and we look at it. Um, uh, our chief architects need to work on that, and you'd, you'd see weird things, right? So there was a there was a line around Saudi Arabia or uh, some country. I remember, not Saudi Arabia, some country, Ethiopia, somebody. There was just a you know diagonal line, a bright line in that in that data plot. And we like, wow, what a pattern! And then there are other patterns. In, in some places, you would see that there are crisscross grids of uh, location signals coming. In some places, you would see bright spots. Continental United States, center of continental United States, there's a huge bright spot, right? Lots of location signals from that place. It's a town called Port Wind. There's nothing over there. But it just happens to be the geographical center of, of continental United States. So anything, it's a default value in some piece of code, right? <laughs> Um, then we would get a lot from 0, 0, and then some people would just make latitude equal to longitude, which will give me that diagonal line. So uh, you, you have to look at the data, and then you have to devise a lot of them to automatically integrate these at scale. That is where the challenges come, right? <coughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah. Other questions? Five minutes ago. How do you define the success of your project? For example, if you have an intention of solving a problem. Have you solved the problem? Yeah. Uh, so, um, in the last scale, if you get the actual predictions out of it, then you say it is solved. Right? Are you? So, because what distinguish I distinguish between have you solved the problem versus have you developed a model to solve the problem. Okay. I think you are meaning the second one. Yeah. That is, have you developed a model to solve the problem and then you want to see whether the model is actually solving the problem. Uh, to, uh, to make it a uh, little more clear, like uh, for example, as a developer or engineer, we will validate ourselves with the uh, validation set or the uh, test set. But uh, in the real world, when it goes uh, or when it gets deployed, yes, it is the real world who is going to interact with your model. So, yeah, I heard a, a thing like most of the data science project fails, like you cannot always say that it is 100% true. Like whatever your models are. Please keep in mind by saying this, right? There are bits and pieces uh, where you, I think you have the right idea, but the way you are stating it is actually a little incorrect. So let me correct okay. you, okay? Um, models never really fail. Okay. Uh, don't say that in production. Modeling is a very, very difficult. Okay, so you have to respect the effort that models don't fail. They can't go out of date like anything else does, right? And sometimes models don't work the way uh, it is expected once they go into production because it is fundamentally very, very difficult. And um, as I said, developing models is not a project, it's a process. 
don't call that a failure, it's a learning, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a learning and you have to take that feedback. So yes, online feedback loops, online feedback loops are a major component of uh, uh, data-driven systems. <laughs> Absolutely. You have to monitor the life system, you have to make life changes, you have to upgrade models. Models are never stationary. Yeah. It's always an ensemble of models that actually functions in the real world. Okay, so you mean that it is never an end? Like it's never an end. And yes, the things will go wrong. Things will always go wrong. That's what we go wrong. We are intelligence engines. Do we go wrong or do we not go wrong? So models will go wrong. Yes, of course. Thank you.
business with the data solutions provider to so looking to choose which data tech based technology to use you have to understand again the questions right are you looking for are you how many how, what what size of data am i looking at typical question you know what size am i looking at what is my latency requirement what is my uh, security requirement um uh, do i do i you know, what is my refresh rate of data right um what is the uh, privacy concerns of having this data those are the questions that you need all right thank you so much everyone hope this was useful thank you We want to say thank you to you. Uh, These are my important support <laughs> points. Oh, oh, I think I'm on the right track. So thank you so much, and uh, I also have a plan for you. Here we go. Oh, thank you so much again. How am I going to carry this? We have carry that also. <laughs> okay, guys. So I think next one is Ganesh. Um, so why we set up? Uh, I think for Ganesh, I'm just uh, just looking for.